you know, you could argue that this is too easy. <laughs> you could argue that it's more hard to take a movie that you kind of like, or you kind of enjoy, and you have to seek out the negative and the bad things about it because you wanted it to be better. You think it could have been better. And that's what I've done for the most part with these unholy rants. But this one, this movie in particular, will truly deserve and truly accept the hate that I'm about to give it. I am talking about Fan 4 Stick. This is a yet another Fantastic Four movie made by 20th Century Fox. It came out in 2015. It was directed by Josh Trank. This was his follow-up to Chronicle, which was a huge uh, hit financially, critically. I loved Chronicle when it came out. So I was looking forward to this. And it was a lot of the casting... It was a lot of uh, the tone, the dark tone, and the trailers that got me very worried. But I still gave it a shot. And wow, this movie just seems to get worse and worse. The more I think about it, the more I watch it. The beginning, you see uh, Reed Richards and Ben Grimm as children. They're friends, and, and they're in school, and they're working on this project, and... I didn't mind this. I didn't mind seeing the kids play these characters. I thought they did a decent enough job. I think it's always interesting when you see two characters that you know are going to become friends, that you know are going to be destined to do something great together, and you see how they meet or you see how they interact when they were younger and how they develop an idea or develop whatever it is that gets them to that point. There's one scene of Reed in class and he's talking about what he wants to do and the foresight that he has in creating this portal and how he thinks it's possible and just showing how intelligent this kid really is. I really like that scene. And I remember thinking when I first saw this, like, okay, maybe this movie won't be so bad. Sure, it's a different type of tone, but I was willing to go with it. Then you cut to them older. <laughs> and we get Miles Teller as... Reed Richards. Oh no. Miles Teller. He's a good enough actor. I've seen him in enough movies where I like him and he's fine. But for whatever reason, I never bought him as Reed Richards. I never bought him as the super brainy guy who's supposed to be awkward around people, but also be so intelligent to where he's always the smartest guy in the room. I don't know. There's something about his his delivery or his performance, or maybe it's just the way how he was directed. Because let's be honest, the direction of this movie is quite bad. It could be just a matter of wrong place at the wrong time. Maybe there is a version of this character where Miles Teller could have played it well enough. I did not see it here. Jamie Bell as Ben Grimm. I like Jamie Bell I do, so I don't really have anything negative to say about him. Uh, you know, the character is a loyal friend to Reed Richards. He's everything that he should be. Uh, so there you go. Kate Mara as Sue Storm. Kate Mara, when I first saw her, I've, I've talked about this so many times. When I first saw her in a movie, it was a random direct-to-DVD horror movie called urban legends bloody mary and she was the main character and she was so terrible i'm pretty sure it was like one of her first movies and she was so bad that i thought wow yeah she'll never go anywhere and then i started to see her pop up in other movies years later and she was good like uh, it was either practice or it was either better direction uh, she she ended up being really good, and especially in that first season of American Horror Story, Murder House. She's amazing in that show. So I turned around and became a big Kate Mara fan until this movie. <laughs> what happened? She once again has that emotionless uh, type of dialogue or that way of delivering her lines. And again, I'm just going to chalk it up to directing. 
I'm going to chalk it up to she was told to play it this way because she comes off a little bitchy. She comes off in a way where she doesn't seem approachable or sympathetic. And I never bought her having any romantic interest in Reed Richards at all. Every scene with the two of them talking is so weird and so awkward. But maybe that's what they were going for. Michael B. Jordan as Johnny Storm. So wait a minute. Let's let's uh, let's think about this for a second. Kate Mara is Sue Storm. Michael B. Jordan is Johnny Storm. So wait, these two are brother and sister, huh? I know they changed it to make them adopted, and I'm not somebody who was angry just because Michael B. Jordan was was cast as Johnny Storm. Or just because they made Johnny Storm black. I'm not saying that's the only thing or the only reason why I was upset by this. I was just upset that they, if they were going to go for a black Johnny Storm, I felt like they also should have gone for a black Sue Storm. If you're going to do it, then commit to it. Go all the way. They're brother and sister for a reason. Don't just change the idea of them being adopted. You just created that just because you wanted to have one black character in the group. You didn't want to have half of the team be black, I guess. That's the only thing I can think of for why they didn't make Sue Storm black as well. So it just seems unneeded. There's no major uh, reason or reveal for the adoption. It just kind of is. And I know that's not always true in real life, but... I'm just thinking to myself, if you're going to make that big jump, that big leap of these two being related in a different way, then do something with it. Make something out of it. Tell a story about how how the family got together or why the father did adopt her. It, it just, there wasn't enough reason for it. Michael B. Jordan is a good enough actor. He does have the charisma to pull off Johnny He's a troublemaker. You get a scene of him crashing his car. So obviously he he wants to uh, thrill seek. But his father forces him for punishment to work in this lab. Because I guess he can just do that. I guess Johnny can just work in this lab with scientists. Because why not? He, he seemed like he was more of a mechanic type guy. But okay. He needs to be here because plot. And the father, Franklin Storm, is played by Rev E. Kathy. I want to mention him because I think he's great. He's great in the movie. He's probably the best character in the movie. So naturally, they kill him. <laughs> of course, right? You know, you, you take possibly like the best actor or the best character in the movie, the most interesting. And once again, we could have done more with him being not only Johnny's father, but adopting Sue. You could have done so much more with that, but they kill him off before we ever really get there. And Toby Kebbell is Victor Von Doom. I remember when the early reports of Victor Von Doom in this story was going to be a hacker. He was going to be some hacker-like guy, and that's how he gets involved with the government. And... Look, you can tell that that was the original plan. They try to reword it, though, when they get introduced to him by saying that he's a computer technician. He just He's really good with computers. A.K.A. you're a hacker, dude. They just didn't want to take the ridicule that people like me gave them when we said, really, Victor Von Doom is a hacker? How lame. Let's talk about this... this Science Lab. NASA recruits all of these characters because Miles Teller, he he had this this teleporter, this prototype teleporter that somebody caught the attention of and brought them here. And Toby Kebble, I guess because he can hack their systems, he's somebody to recruit. So all of them are in this lab, and I feel like this lab set is something that we see so much of. Uh, for a movie with this budget, this budget is 120 to possibly 155 million. They have a gap because there was a ton of reshoots, so it could be somewhere between that range. But with a with a budget like this, you would think that we would have 
just more to the set, more to this science. Or even the night when they get drunk and they decide to use the teleporter because I guess the scientists didn't want to use humans yet. So they go there and they wind up on Planet Zero. And this too, it's another set that I swear we see four or five times over and over again throughout this movie. Planet Zero, just this this other dimension that they can travel to and it's a little warped and this huge accident happens and Victor seemingly dies on the planet. I would feel bad about Victor dying, but he was a douche. <laughs> so I didn't care about him one way or another. Sue Storm didn't go on the trip with them, which I don't understand. I don't I feel like they just did that because they wrote her to be so uptight that she wouldn't have ever done this anyways. So she stayed back once she found out what they were doing. She stayed at the computers and tried to help them through it. This huge explosion happens when they try to come back. And this explosion gives them all their superpowers. I will admit the scene where the lab is destroyed and trashed. It's played up like a horror scene. It does look terrifying. I will admit that, and it does not make getting these type of powers seem appealing. It makes it seem like it's a burden, and, and it's the worst thing that you'd ever have. Like the shot of Johnny on fire on the table, and he can't control it. He just looks like a burning man who's just going to be on fire for the rest of his life. Sue is invisible, and Reed, his body is turned into rubber, and it's all sprawled out and stretched out, and he can't control it. The CGI is a little wonky, I'll be honest, but how else are you going to make somebody look rubber? The Thing. Let's talk about Ben Grimm, The Thing. He is CGI, and I talked about in my uh, the original Fantastic Four movies how I much preferred the suit. I preferred an actor in a suit acting, physically acting, and being present. Seeing the thing as a CGI character, I, I it, look, I get it. It makes sense. It was bound to happen. You know that deep down that's what they really wanted to do. And some people, fans, I'm sure, were hoping for that because he does look bigger. And he does look more like how the thing looks in the comic books. I can admit that. It's just... There are certain shots where the thing I don't think looks all that great. There are moments when he's in the shadow and in the dark that look decent enough. But when you get a good look at him, when you see him in the light, it just never quite gets real enough for me. Reed Richards breaks out of the lab and he promises Ben that he'll come back. And this seemed odd because it just seemed like he, sure, maybe it was out of fear Maybe he thought they were going to just experiment on them and kill them fine. But he makes the promise that he'll come back for them. And then the movie just decides to go ahead one year later. What? 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 One whole year? Seriously? So Reed breaks out and he promises to come back to save them. But he doesn't come back for a whole year. What a dick! And I know that the Thing and Reed always have an issue with each other. Especially because the Thing will sometimes uh, be defensive and blame Reed for the accident and whatnot. But Reed is always somebody who is trying to find the cure for Ben. And that's how you sympathize with both characters. This movie just makes Reed look selfish. It makes Reed look like an a-hole. And he's been hiding out as a fugitive in Central America. He's been using his rubber stretching abilities to change his face and disguises. Sure, he's been he's been trying to create a cure himself. And he has all these parts and equipment and experiments going on. But still, he went about it the wrong way. It just, from this point on, if I didn't already hate Reed Richards, I definitely do now by this point. The military catches Reed, and with the help of Sue Storm and the Thing, 
they they grab him and they hint at the idea that in this year the the group has been used for military missions and operations especially the thing uh using him to to drop him into places i remember a trailer that showed the thing being dropped from a helicopter and him smashing up cars and presumably working for the government. None of that is in this movie. They briefly mention it, and obviously it's implied, but that's a whole sequence, potentially, that was cut. And it wasn't in the lab or Planet Zero, so it would have been nice to see an action scene that was somewhere else, but we never got that. That's confusing. It may be... With all of the issues with Josh Trank and the reshooting and the re-editing and the reshuffling, there's probably a bunch of scenes that got cut out, a bunch of action moments, a bunch of story points that got cut out that would make a lot more of this stuff make sense. So NASA makes a deal with Reed saying that if he reopens the portal for them, they'll help him find a cure. So he says, okay, so wait. I go back to when he broke out and was hiding out for a year. You're telling me that all he had to do was stay because they would have helped him find a cure? Wow. What an even more dick, Reed Richards, you are. So when he does reopen the portal, explorers do go out there and they find Victor Von Doom. He's still alive. But somehow his suit has been like grafted and melted onto his skin. So he looks all freakish and gross. Victor now spending a year on this planet and whatever it's done to his brain or molecules. He believes that the human race needs to be destroyed and that Earth needs to be rebuilt. And this is where he calls himself Doom, not Dr. Doom. Just doom. What the F? This is so dumb. Look, how many times have we seen this? How many times have we seen a villain who, for whatever reason, thinks, hey, the human race, Earth needs to be destroyed and rebuilt because it's too far gone and blah, 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 blah. There are moments when it's done well. There are moments when it's done in a way that makes sense like Thanos or Killmonger or other villains that when they explain why they want to destroy Earth, you go, all right, this makes sense. Your point of view makes sense. But when they do it in a lazy way, when we have a villain who his reason for doing it is just because, no, no mas, you don't get a pass for me with that. That's just lazy writing. So Victor, he is walking through the halls and he's killing all these scientists. He's blowing up their heads with his, I guess he has telekinesis because why not? Victor Von Doom, I guess, can do whatever the hell he wants. Look, this is a tense scene. It's kind of a scary scene, but it just, this isn't Dr. Doom to me. This isn't anything that he would be like if he exists. He uses the portal to start destroying Earth. That's when the Fantastic Four have to go to Planet Zero once again. I swear this is the third or fourth time that we've seen this planet. They go there. They have a big fight with him. And I say big fight, sarcastic, because it's possibly the shortest final battle ever. It's just, we're building to this. It's a huge climactic moment it's a huge just just brawl that that should be happening and that's where you can go all out even if you want to argue that it would be too much cgi or that would be too much spectacle and you want to ground it more it's that still would be better than this crap that we got here they defeat doom so easily the thing punches doom into the beam And Doom just gets disintegrated. So that easily he's killed and destroyed. Yet another Fantastic Four movie where Doctor Doom was used very poorly. And Doctor Doom is one of the best Marvel villains ever. And so I cannot believe that they've had so many chances. They've had so many times to get this villain right. 
but each and every single time they always seem to change something or they always seem to undo something or they always seem to take away what was most interesting about him and they screw it all up. Oh yeah, the moment where the thing punches him, he says it's clobbering time. And I want to mention this because, yeah, sure, fine, that's the thing's catchphrase and it's great to hear. But for whatever reason, Jamie Bell's voice or the alteration that they did to the voice when he's the thing, I thought sounded terrible. I think the thing's voice sounds terrible. Michael Chiklis did a great job having that graspy, grovelly voice that just sounds like something a rock dude would sound like. Where this just sounds like a regular goody two-shoes old guy. Hey, it's clobbering time, people. It's just like, no, that's not how the thing should sound like at all on earth they reward the fantastic four i guess for stopping doom even though did they really know what was going on it just felt like it just happened but they get rewarded by being given a new base of operations and get this the government was so happy that they did this that they saved the earth that they are going to let them do studies and experiments without the government's interference. Really? You th you expect me to buy that? You expect me to buy that the government, who was doing everything that they were doing throughout this movie, being so hungry for, for the new technology or for this new portal or what was inside of it, you're telling me that they're just going to give that all up and let this group do their own thing and not screw with them, not be involved with them at all? Bullshit! I don't buy that, and I don't buy this movie. Oh yeah, there's a quick moment before the credits where they're all standing together, and they all decide, oh hey, you know, we should have a group name. And we should call ourselves the Fantastic Four. Ah ha ha ha. This is where the tone of the movie, by this point, just gets sillier and goofier. And they throw in all of these jokes that the first half of the film did not have. It, what a mess. What an absolute shit fest, convoluted, piece of crap film ever. This is one of the worst superhero movies that I've ever seen. It's something to where... I was trying to go along with the new take. I was trying to go along with the new tone. But then the one-year break kills me. The The unlikability factor of characters like Reed and, and Sue and not caring about Johnny or Ben, not caring about the group at all. And then the bastardization of Victor Von Doom, always getting this character wrong. And then, and then the ending, the end battle being the mess that it is. Wow. Just wow. The problems with, t with Josh Trank on set, uh, there's so much that can be talked about with it. I don't even know how much of it was confirmed. The rumors were that he was getting drunk on set and showing up late and that they had a trailer for him for him to sort of chill out in and relax in, but he kept destroying it and causing damage to it. So they just had to fire him. It just, it was too much. I suspect that producers finished the movie, tried to salvage and make sense of whatever was going on here. They reshot so much of it, re-edited so much of it. Even Josh Trank, right before the movie came out, gave a tweet saying how much the movie sucks and how much it's not his vision and how disappointed he is by what happened to the film. And that's crazy. It's crazy to see a director trash their own movie right before it comes out. It's quite hilarious. And get this, Fox originally wanted this movie to connect to the X-Men franchise that they also owned. Wow! Yeah, that, that was a good idea. That really worked out. Can you imagine if they did have a connection? If they did have an X-Men character or actor show up here to connect it? What a waste that would have been. 
Why is it so hard to get the Fantastic Four right? Why is it so hard to give us a movie that's universal as far as what the Fantastic Four should be, what they can be? This film is so frustrating to watch and to talk about and to think about. Let me know in the comments below how much you think it sucks. I'd be surprised if there's anybody that does like it, but if you do, tell me why. Like, comment, subscribe. Later.